All right, let's go ahead and uh, lead in. So yesterday we had some uh, some nice moves on the S and P. Um, our all three gaps on market profile filled yesterday, but I want to go over a recap on um, yesterday's trading. How you can use a larger Renko size entering off a smaller Renko size, and then we're going to go over the scalp uh, trader uh, this morning um, that we're going to be getting on the download page. For you members, we're going to go over that in a second also. So hang tight. We'll go over this. We won't make this video too long. I know there's news coming out today. So let's just go over it. So first of all, in the trading room, we have two charts that we show. Um, we show a 120.20 Uni Rinko. And the 120.20, we use this for A, zone break entries. There's a zone break entry yesterday at 53.06. Got as low as what 84 potential. So had a nice 20 point uh, potential short on this Rinko size. But what if you want to trade off this 120.20 for larger stops, and you want to trade off the smaller Rinko size? The Rinko size next to it is a 110.10. So that's half the Rinko size. So that's going to be half the stop. So what does that mean? We can use the 120 as a, let's say you don't want to enter off the 120 for these big potential, um, you know, position trade moves, I guess, because you're holding it longer off a longer Rico size, but you're also having a larger stop. Because a 20 Rico, your stop has to be outside that Rico high. So if it's a 20 Rinko, it would be a 20 tick to stop, where if you have a 110 Rinko, your stop would be just outside that Rinko size, which is a 10 tick stop. So totally different uh, charts. You have a longer Rinko size and a shorter Rinko size. How can you use the 120 as a trend chart to show stronger and weaker markets. Well, we can use this 20. This is called a window of opportunity. If you look at the oscillator below, we have it down there for a reason. Oscillators by themselves are worthless, but it works really great with our zone indicator. This is our zone indicator that's been tested for the past 30 years. This tells us where the market should reverse and where its trend should contain trend in the direction of that trend. If it's red, we're shorting. If it's green, we're buying. We're looking for zone breaks. These yellow uh, entry bars come up automatically, give you an audible alert when they fire off, and it lets you know that a possible move on the downside on the S&P is coming. So if those zones are red, when this oscillator gets pegged down here, which it gets pegged at negative uh, on this Rinko size, 123.3, actually 123, let's get the data window up for you. So you're 123.81, so 123.81, it started getting pegged right there at 123.81, and it stayed pegged from uh, 13.43 to 14.06. So you had a 20-minute of a window of opportunity to enter off of a smaller Rinko size. So at this, when we, we, we turned a negative 123.81 on our oscillator, it gave us opportunity to look for zone breaks off of a 110 Rinko. And these guys fired off yesterday for your entries. We had one. Between this one and the opportunity, two, three, four, and five opportunities. Why? Because the market was in a hard downtrend. You noticed that the 120 was trending hard. Your oscillator was pegged, meaning this is a weak market. So what you're doing is you're selling weakness. Pick your market. You're shorting weakness. You're not trying to buy the low like a lot of counter trend traders are doing. Let's 
shorting low and covering lower because that's the momentum of the market. So during that window of opportunity off the 120, A, you can trade off the 120 by itself and just try to position trade one move down or you can have multiple entries off of your 110 and the window of opportunity. When these line up, here's what typically happens. You'll start off on the 120 where you'll get cranking meaning you, you'll break you'll break a zone break and it starts moving when this zone breaks when the 120 comes before the 110 typically you're in a hard trend the oscillator will confirm then you get multiple entries to the downside the same thing window of opportunity happened in the morning yesterday also so our window of opportunity we had a really weak market the weak market started at 9.19 in the morning and it continued all the way until the oscillator started retracing to 9.54 so that created a window of opportunity to look for zone breaks off a smaller Renko size so the same thing we had five opportunities on the last push down on the 120 the 120 started early here at 9.20 9.19 it's a weak market we're pegged 123.1 we're pegged south actually gets a zone break at 948 so you only, you had one opportunity here like you had in the afternoon at 38 low is 21 still a nice little 16 point potential the afternoon was a 20 point potential or you can look for these zone breaks off the smaller Rinko size in the afternoon it gave you five opportunities this one gave you one two three, four, five, six opportunities. So it lets you know at that level that you can take a smaller Rinko size to get with the larger Rinko size push. All right, so that's one way that you can get into smaller Rinkos using a smaller Rinko size for the overall push. So using a 120 and a 110. The best time to look for these 120 trades and the 110 trades is when you're breaking into my market profile zones. Now, all three of them hit yesterday. Now, what I did yesterday and what you can do every day is look at these market profile big windows of opportunity. So yesterday, we broke down at this level that's when the market started running it came right down to our control our previous control point and then it bounced really hard off of it so you can see where the windows of opportunity uh, happen so yesterday we have these marked up so today our window of opportunity if you look at it the big gaps in the market Are going to be a break when we break 5302 and three quarters you got a possible run to 5311 we break this dual support of 5291 and three quarters we get a nice big run to 73 and a quarter so what you do when you break through 5292 here the targets at control point the previous day control point at 5273 you have almost 20 points of potential it's called a big hole in the market. So what happened yesterday, we broke low value area at this level. And then we got this. We got the market start trending hard. Broke through market profile. And you can see as a weaker market start trending hard, that's when you want to fire in these zone breaks. Two ways you can fire in the zone breaks. One way to fire in the zone breaks, whether you're trading off the 20 or the 110, is just you can sell the bid and put your stop just above the swing high if you're shorting, meaning the Rinko size. You trade off the 20, sell the bid, and then you trade off the swing, uh, your stop off the swing high. That's going to afford you a minimum of 20 tick stop. Sell off the bid, put it at the swing high, swing high. You can see the swing high is at, uh, the swing highs. You can do it that way. I like going two ticks above the swing highs if you do that, if you're trading off the 110 or 20. Another way is you can do what's called a backfill trade, which 
uh, a lot of traders do. What they'll do is once a yellow signal comes on, you can have your hot keys on Ninja Trader, a buy or sell key, and it's automatically going, these Rinko bars like to retrace. Meaning when this yellow bar fires off, this Rinko bar, if it fires off here at 37.50, it likes to retrace on the next bar. So it, it likes to come up typically 50% of that bar before she goes back down. So instead of hitting the bid at 37 three quarters, as soon as you get a yellow bar, you can hit your hot key, going a negative 10 ticks from where the price is. So if you're 37 and a half, then you can have it 10 ticks going the other direction and it'll put a limit order in of 50% of that retracement wherever you want the hot key to happen. If you want a four tick retracement, you know, typically the 10, uh, the 10 will go 50% of four tick retracement to five tick retracement and the 20 will go between a eight to, to uh, 10 tick retracement before it continues. So that's one way you can do it to lessen your stop on the larger Rinko size. Also, you can use your hotkeys in Ninja Trader and program it. This is very simple to do when you do hotkeys. You go under Tools, and once you go under Tools, you can go in and set your hotkeys on your order entry on how you want to do it. You just hit Add, put your hotkeys, whatever limit you want to do, and you can put what F1, F2, whatever you want to do. And uh, Ninja Trader has a video on how to do that. But you can put, let's say you have F1 as your buy limit. Once you hit F1, it's going to put a limit order in 10 ticks back on this one. Or five, uh, F2 is 5 ticks back on this one. So it's a good way how to, uh, to, to get backfills if you have smaller stops. That way, if you're trading off the 20 Rinko, you can still get smaller stops because you're doing a backfill on momentum. That's one way how to do it. Okay, so, but that's how you can trade a 120 off of a, and a 110 together if you guys want to do that. Let's go over to the scalp trader you guys are going to be getting. So we, we know this already. We know we have an automated software. If the market's in a downtrend, we educate traders. You can use our automated software, our trade management software to get into these setups, meaning it will fire in these setups for you if you turn the software on. And it'll let you, and the software will manage your stop, manage your, uh, manage your uh, entries for you. Another way to do it is I have a scalp trader that's coming out to you guys that's this. Now, here's a difference in the software you have now, which you'll currently still have, and what the scalp trader is. The scalp trader is different, where you can tell the scalper to get you in before a zone break is actually happening. You can move your zone break where you want it. What does that mean? If you notice here, if I go into the strategy, I want you to look at two different things. I want you to look at this, the, the ticks, the trail ticks. I'm at a 1 and a 1. And the next one, I'm at a 10 and a 10. So what I did is I changed my trail ticks from 1, which is our default in our trading room, our trail ticks to 1 to 10. What that does, it means that you're getting in 10 ticks earlier than a zone break would normally happen meaning that would be the break. What's the difference in doing that? Well, if you get into these markets where you know that our zone breaks are effective, like when they, when they break our zone, it typically gets a nice run. So if you look at the bottom on this zone, this is today's price action, yesterday and today's. So here's today's trade, here's yesterday's trade afternoon. But here's our normal zone break, right? We're trending down. We start going horizontal. It's going the strategy is getting ready to short this right at this level. Two 
too close below that level, that's where it's going to get short, and it does, and it got filled at 83 and three quarters on the strap. Now, I just put one contract to scalp it to show you the uh, opportunity you have with this thing. By, by putting the zone 10 ticks back, now we're going to close earlier, depending on what Rinko size you use. You can use this on any Rinko size. Look at the difference in fill. 83 and 3 quarters. Now you're short 85 and a half. So the difference is right there would be 83, 84. That's 6. 7 tick difference, almost 2 points based upon your entry by putting your zone earlier. So you can use a scalp trader to scalp the market from this sweet spot zone where our normal entries normally happen anyway. You can get this sweet spot to scalp because that's where the market typically likes to run anyway when it first breaks down. So what you're doing is you're scalping our normal breakout before it even, before it even comes up. So then when it does kick in, you got that trade that likes to fuel to the upside or downside. So you can change this zone anywhere you want it to, but what typically happens is the breaking point in the market, the reason we have these zone breaks are at these levels. That's the breaking point in the market, these lows or these highs. That's where the market likes to break. So the market likes to break at these levels. What we can do then is we can change our zone to reach up to those levels before the breakout even happens. So you notice when the breakout happened this morning here at 96 and a half, the market just started running. 96 and a quarter, it's already at 53.02. It just took off because this is a critical level. This is where all the buy stops are from the shorters, from the counter chain traders. So the counters are above this high. And that's why, this is why the software works so well. And that's why I caught those big moves yesterday too. So you can see it's above that high, right? So that is above the high, so it's what it does. It's a self-generating trade because it likes to move towards that direction, right? Right when it breaks through this high, you see this nice little crack, and you start getting some buy stops. Especially if you're breaking through high value, low value area, you tend to get a nice little move. So what you can do is get in this earlier. You can get in it earlier by looking for a move as far as that goes, you know, to the upside or downside. All right. So th the same thing applies if you're doing uh, the NASDAQ futures, same thing. You can see when it's, when it's scalping the NASDAQ the same way this morning it's scalping the NASDAQ. So we know that the buy stops are just above this swing high. Look how the NASDAQ takes off, shoots above this swing high. That's why the zone break works so well. NASDAQ takes off. Just to blow this low, right, the sell stops hit, NASDAQ takes off. So what we can do is we can scalp in between, that's what we call this a SIM scalper, in between this zone. In other words, your entries are just going to be earlier. You see your entry is going to come up. And what's the difference in entries on the NASDAQ? It could mean quite a bit with slippage. This is 44 and a half. This is 46 and three quarters. That's nine ticks. So you're nine ticks better on this entry than the original zone breakout. 51 and a half to 53 and a quarter. 
nine ticks better. 54 and three quarters to 56 and a half. So you get my point. 40 and three quarters down to 39 and a half. So especially if there's run, if you're running in the market, right? So that you can change. You can change by simply changing your zones to get into that sweet spot coming up to the original entry. All right, you'll still have the same thing. You'll still have your trail, ATR trail, break even, start time, stop time, your trend, whatever you want to do. You still got that also. Okay, so that will be on the um, that'll be coming up coming up on the on the members download page where we'll get that uh, we'll get that to you guys as far as that goes where we can download it and you guys uh, um, you guys can take advantage of the sim scalper but you know just remember what it what it likes to do it's trying to find instead of here on this zone break you can change it where we know once we break through this low it likes to go here 